Hi, my name is Ken Tomiyama, and I am going to give you this class, Fundamental Mathematics for Robotics. And today we will start talking about Lecture 1 Prologue. Well, actually, the introduction of what this course is. This is a list of materials we will cover in this class, but don't worry, we will go one by one uh, each, every class. So, don't have to know anything about that. The first, I want you to know who I am. My name is Ken Tomiyama. Is it easy to pronounce Tomiyama? Probably not. So, I pick up on the, whoop, I'm sorry. Uh, here. Uh, pick up on T and Dr. T. That's my nickname. So please call me Dr. T. Uh, I got my PhD at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. And then I taught at universities uh, in the United States for 10 years and went back to Japan and taught another 28 years. Uh, in uh, universities. Right now I'm with the Future Robotics Technology Center we call FURO at the Chiba Institute of Technology. So my hobby is uh, teaching, class teaching, like this one here. I love it. That's why I'm making this video. And also presentation coaching. That's what I do quite often. So this is how I moved. Starting from Tokyo to California, Los Angeles, El Paso, Texas, State College, Pennsylvania, and then come back to Chiba Institute of Technology. So, I'm in here. Which one do you think is me? Well, well you, I guess you can see that I'm one of those guys and the girl next to me. And this is the time when we had uh, commencement, graduated. I'm myself, PhD, and she was master's degree. And she is my wife. Okay. Uh, February 2019, I went to VNU and gave a lecture. And this was, this is a lecture. Picture. So, so now you know who I am. Okay. The next thing is a robot. What is a robot? Everybody has different idea as to what is a robot. And probably one of the most common understanding of a robot is a machine that helps people, not Terminator. Okay? Helps people. And my answer is a robot is a useful, clever machine, but instead of machine, I use the word tool. A useful, clever tool. And our answer is that robot is a machine that feels, thinks, and moves. Our answer meaning uh, we say that robot is this at Furo. And the robot can feel, think, and move using sensors to measure, and computers to process, and motors to move. But the word feel has a newer meaning nowadays that it is also represented by emotion and sensibility. So you can talk about emotional robots or emotion in robot. Let's look at some of the interesting robots. You like to, to see some of those robots, right? So here are some of them. Ibo, probably you're familiar with the, the first generation Ibo. This is the second generation Ibo, okay, came out recently. And this one here is the Mars Pathfinder, which the original one was sent to Mars, and the new one will, will go there soon. And those cars are autonomous cars developed by Google. And this one here is a security robot which is working at one of the, the airports in Japan. And this, this is a household robot which is just like Roomba, but it's a lot more intelligent. And called the Rulo was developed by us. We developed this one here, and Panasonic is selling those machine. And the first thing you will think about when you hear the word robot is probably a humanoid. So here are humanoids. Well, this is um, the, 
the most outstanding, uh, whatever. Um, it is called the Gemini. Do you know which one is the guy, which one is the robot? Of course you know. This one is a robot. This guy, this is the guy who developed the robot. He built a robot which looks exactly like him. It's, he's kind of a strange guy. And this one here is a RoboCop robot by uh, one of the professors at the uh, Chile Institute of Technology. And this one here is called Mark V. The, this was created by Dr. Furta. He is a manager of our hero, uh, but he used to be my student. And Atlas is very famous, Boston Dynamics robot, and Pepper is SoftBank robot. And there are several robots at Furo as well. Probably the most famous one is this one here, Sakura 2. This one and uh, predecessors of this one here went into nuclear disaster site at Fukushima. And which one should I... Okay, the, the human... This one here, core, is... You know the wheelchairs. The wheelchairs are handy, but wheelchairs cannot go upstairs and downstairs. So this is instead of wheelchair, this is a leg chair. You can ride on it and this one can go upstairs and downstairs as well. Unfortunately, this is only the lower portion of that and uh, we, have, uh, we have quit doing that because of this disaster. But anyway, MORPH is a humanoid. Um, we call that robotic athlete. It can do a lot of those acrobatic motions as well. This Hulk to Kai, although it looks like X, but it's supposed to be Kai, uh, has eight legs and it can do lots of different motions. And finally, those two are the mobilities. This one can take four different modes. You can ride on it, you can use it as a scooter, blah, blah, blah. This Kanguro is a little bit more autonomous mobility. Let me show you how this kangaroo moves. As you can see, it can make a very sharp turn because it has uh, autonomous balancing. And this one also has so-called sonic, body sonic communication. When you ride on it, you can feel the heartbeat of the robot. Now he's showing off a feature that you point a point position on your smartphone. What it can do is that uh, this robot, Kanguro, can go to that particular position and wait for you. So he's ready. So do you like to have one of those? Well, unfortunately, we are not selling them yet.
So that's a very nice robot. But to make a robot like that, we have to know a lot. Why we have to use a lot of technologies. Well, if you look at the parts, we have cameras and sensors for the data acquisition, and then actuators, motors to move, and the computers to do the signal processing, the hardware. Then, talking about the hardware so structure, strength is very important, right? And another thing is this DOF, degrees of freedom, namely how many joints you'd like to use with your robot. And if you do have many motors, then how do you control those motors to make a motion? And totality of motion of, of the whole body is called the behavior of the, 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 <coughs> the robot. So to, to do all of those, the software side, you, home, you have information processing, like calculation processing, data acquisition, and communication. Well, within the robot body, there are lots of sensors and lots of motors. So there are lots of signals and power grids existed. And of course, AI. The robot has to decide what to do by itself. So therefore, you need to have recognition, decision making, and behavior planning generation. And all of those, as I have said, are based on mathematics in the So mathematics is the basis for every one of them. So we have to learn it. But how? We will learn those mathematics from robotics, from robotics point of view. So we learn robots and we try to do certain things with a robot. And we'll see the mathematics are a very, very handy, useful tool to do that. Okay. To start with the mathematics, we have to know where we are right now so that we know where to get started. So I assume that uh, you are either the last year of high school or first year in a college. So therefore, you have already learned the basic high school mathematics such like differentiation and vectors. So, starting from there, but at, by the end of this class, you will learn calculus and linear algebra. Those are the two basic mathematical pools. The calculus is the, from differentiation and, the, and the linear algebra from vectors. Those, those are the uh, extended form of those differentiations and vectors. So, how do we learn this? Once again, I've been repeating myself quite a bit, from robots, not from mathematics. Therefore, this fundamental mathematics for robotics class is not a math course, but a robotics course. Okay, objective of this course, once again, I will repeat this one again and again that we will learn mathematics is handy and indispensable. It's very, very useful and needed tool for the robotics. And we should be able to use those tools in motion, describing motions of robots. So let's start from a very simple example. A very simple example. Ah, Mark 5, okay. But not the whole thing. This is a simple example, though. A uh, mass model for a pair of legs. Pair of legs, right and left legs. And of Mark 5, humanoid 4, gate regeneration. Gate is how you work. So from this is from appendix of MEMS thesis by Dr. Yamato. Dr. Yamato is one of my colleagues and my use, he used to be my student too. Okay, so this Mark 5, and if you look at the mathematical model of this one here, you have hips and weight and legs in total five joints. One, two, three, four. There are two joints at the hip, right? Left and right. And then five joints. 
So five joint angles. Th there are five angles you have to decide. And motion in the sidestar plane, wow. This is another one of those fancy words, which is worth uh, remembering. Sidestar plane meaning that uh, this plane here. So you are looking at the robot from side, and how the, the motion you can see is a sidestar plane motion. Okay, this is the equation. But before going into the equation, let me stress the fact that you do not need to understand this. Don't, don't. If you do understand, then you don't have to be in this class. Okay? So just look at it and feel the intensity of it. This is a simple equation, but A is 5, five, five by 5 matrix, so called. And this is a vector, matrix, vector, vector, uh, matrix, vector, vector. And dot represents this one here is derivative, time derivative. This is twice time derivative, etc., etc. So you don't see what these are, right? You don't know what's going on. But what I want to show you is that five joint, five link manipulator equation is such a such a mess. Here we go. Okay, this is page one and page two. And this is the model I showed you, and this is the equation. Well, obviously you cannot see it, so let me enlarge it. This is the equation I just showed you. So we, so far, had two pages, and then two more pages. To write down just one equation. So we needed four pages to, to write just one equation, okay? And there are lots of differentiation, vectors, and matrices and sine cosine functions and lots of parameters so this is this is a fact this is a reality whenever you deal with a robot and trying to generate a whole body motion it is really difficult or com complex and uh, even if you have only five this is what sh what's going to happen so if you have 22 like mark 5 has 22 hmm, you don't want to write down those equations so, how we learn those functions, vectors, differentiations? In this course, we will introduce you to those and show you how good those, how good tools they are for robotics. I guess I went too far. So, that's the end of this uh, introduction prologue. And uh, I'll thank you and show you the homework and that is the end of this lecture. Thank you.